This is a personal appreciation of the King's Road House by Rudolf Schindler. It's just about to celebrate its 100th anniversary. During my days as a student at the Southern California Institute of Architecture, SciArc, I was bombarded by images of modern architecture from all around the world. As a child, I had read two books by Frank Lloyd Wright, An Organic Architecture and The Natural House. In the late 80s, the LA Architecture Forum used the house for a lecture series. In addition to learning a lot from those talks, I was able to spend time in the house at night with the outdoor fireplaces lit. It gave a sense of what it must have been like to live there. It turns out the place had always functioned as a salon for artists, architects, and musicians. Pauline Schindler's father and sister commented on the Schindler's habit of having much company and staying up to all hours. The materials are modest. Schindler was thrifty. Sometimes the budgets were low. The ceilings were also low, and the walls were thick slabs of bare concrete, which was an innovation that Schindler experimented with. This shows the construction crew raising thick concrete walls that have been cast in a wood frame on the ground. This is called tilt-up construction, and most of the one- or two-story warehouses built, at least in the United States in the last 50 years, involve this technique because it's cheap and quick. And here we see the walls that have been raised from the inside. So the material's the same inside and out. There was something like a three inch gap between walls and depending on the function of the room, it was filled with either clear glass, frosted glass or concrete. Schindler designed the house for himself and his wife, Pauline, but also for another couple they were close to, the Chases. So they purchased the property together, Schindler designed it, and the construction crew with Schindler very involved built the place. The Schindler house was such a departure from existing residential architecture because of what it did not have. There is no conventional living room, dining room, or bedrooms in the house. The residence was meant to be a cooperative live-work space for two young families. The concrete walls and sliding glass panels made novel use of industrial materials by the open floor plan inc integrated the external environment into the residence, setting a precedent for California architecture in particular. So the Chases moved out not too long after they had moved into the house with the Schindlers. And Rudolf Schindler and his wife shared the house, coincidentally, with Richard Neutra, his wife and son. And so these two were going to become two of the most famous modern architects in the world. And it's just kind of interesting to think that they lived together for a while. But Neutra never really adjusted to this type of life or the architecture of the home. Besides a communal living room, a communal kitchen, communal dining, there were no real bedrooms. There were instead sleeping porches open to the weather. So this life together ended in 1930 when the two principals, Rudolf and Richard, parted ways. They'd been working together for a while and did not speak to each other until Schindler was on his deathbed in 1953. But each one, when sharing the architectural studio at Kings Road House, each had his own practice, reset the Southern California aesthetic in regard to modern residential architecture. The dreamy Schindlers were in the end a natural abrasive for the stolid Neutras. And then there was free love, 
Schindler flirted or slept with every woman, married or not, of every client, friend, and associate he ever met. Perhaps a slight overstatement, but as Dion put it to her mother, Schindler has the kind of erotic makeup you always thought Richard had. He perplexes American women. Both of us, the Neutras, dislike flirting. Pauline Schindler arranged lectures for the two men, and they also taught the occasional university course. As architectural historian Esther McCoy wrote, Schindler and Neutra were then known around Los Angeles for their distinctive dress, their lectures, and their twin air-cooled Franklin cars. They were looked upon as twin freaks. So here's one of my favorite aspects of the house two sleeping porches. I'm not sure how much they were used, but when I first saw the house in the 80s, I just thought that would be amazing. There was a magic to the King's Road house. Night fires shone beneath copper canopies and in garden walls. A web of moonlight played through eucalyptus leaves while indirect lighting made the canvas and clear story glow like Japanese lanterns. Harwell Harris called it Camelot. Neutra rhapsodized from his second story sleeping basket. The leaves of our trumpet vine glisten with raindrops. The huge bamboo stalks together with a contingent of birds who with their twittering apply the colorful background music to Diona. Songs sway gently in the breeze. Diona wrote, I cannot remember when I felt so well anywhere. Occasionally at parties, I'm introduced as the one who claims to be happy, apparently an unknown phenomenon here. In Germany, I never heard so much talk about broken marriages and nervous breakdowns. The Neutras relaxed into the King's Road spirit, Schindler's fluid architecture, and Pauline's relentless lefty politics were seductive. After a while, Neutra was spending a lot of his day in bathing suit and Dion as Harwell Harris described, walked through the room and smiled. She was bare-legged, wearing sandals, and something resembling a toga, with the ribbon drawn above the completely untroubled brow. Here's a 3D view of the house, um, and these are the two sleeping porches. Um, so again, there was a shared kitchen and four rooms sort of loosely defined as studios that might be bedrooms. Uh, here's one of those rooms. They all shared sort of a shoji screen, natural light. These panels were made from Celatex, which is a paper-based panel. There might be a desk and a chair, or there might even be something where the desk and the other furniture converts it more to a sleeping space. And Galka Shire was a significant art collector who, after the Schindlers moved out of the house, decided to live there with her collection. So one differentiation between Schindler and Neutra was with Schindler, you got an individual design for you, and with Neutra, you got a Neutra. Uh, if you look, and I'm going to show a few examples of the different homes designed by Schindler, the, the variety of forms is vast. And again, over 40 years, he made many different sorts of houses. And he was constantly interested in experimenting. The Tischler house was a late work by Schindler. I think you can see the influence of Frank Lloyd Wright forms here. And indeed, Schindler had worked for Frank Lloyd Wright and then developed his own practice. I actually was lucky enough to meet Adolf Tischler, who was a jewelry designer, and get a tour of the house. And what was remarkable was it was so different from another Schindler I had been at, and certainly different from the King's Roadhouse. Uh, the, and again, it was this one was on a very tight budget. And another interesting aspect was that Adolf Tischler 
was told by Schindler, don't hire me until you've talked to two other good architects, because this is going to be like a marriage and I want to make sure you chose me. And Tischler had the opportunity to interview Neutra and another pretty brilliant architect named Gregory Ain. And he chose Schindler because of his kind of openness and the surprise element of how the house might turn out. Another home by Schindler. And this part is sort of the living part. And then these are quite innovative, these open reinforced concrete forms. Uh, I just find this amazing that it was built in 1926. It seems so futuristic. It's still there right on the sand in Newport Beach. And um, it's just so different from many of his other works. So I've got to talk about some of the furniture by Schindler, especially because furniture is my main interest, even though I was originally trained as an architect but also as a sculptor. Look at these rectilinear forms, these very simple L made from redwood. And then that's sort of the tight grid aspect of this piece, very structured. And then there's this soft canvas cushion that's actually slung on dowels to form a comfortable seat. So here's the main room of the Schindler house. And one thing it's famous for is this copper V-shaped in plan uh, fireplace. And then notice this sofa. I mean, again, this is in the 20s and 30s. It's got tables that are arms. It's got a pull out, sort of like a trundle bed. So this piece can be the sofa, the ottoman, the bed and it's next to one of these sling chairs. And over here, it appears to me that this dining table is in sections and it actually can be stacked and pushed back into this cabinet. Also, such a classic Schindler piece here, this very humble but carefully detailed redwood stool. I also recently saw this piece for the first time. And what I love is the the way the geometries are so pure and that the table is supported by a curved piece of wood. From my perspective, Schindler influenced everyone. And I love this table. That's, uh, I mean, it's sort of, it's a yoga, like you, it's for meditation. It's got a bookshelf. It's got this cantilever, so it's sort of bridge-like. And then literally the furniture maker is sitting on it to make sure that it's actually strong enough right before he delivers it. Uh, beautiful minimalist pieces. Um, it's called the Line Ground Sideboard by Scram. Just so elemental and pure. And there's a few drawer units here. And this piece is a tribute to Rudolf Schindler. I think you can see some of the constructivist, constructivist form similarities by Pamela Shamshiri. And last but least, no, last but not least, I did these tables as sort of homage to Schindler, and I covered them in a really wild, variegated uh, laminate. If you haven't already, I hope you can see the Kings Road House in person at some point. It's now owned and operated and protected by the Mac Institute. So it's often possible to visit in person. Uh, I particularly like being there at night. And just a little blurb here the, it, about how the, how the house originated. He's only been in LA for about a year and he and his wife want to build their own home. They buy a piece of land and share the cost with another couple who briefly live in the house after it's finished. So this story says, Schindler conceived aspects of the house while camping at Yosemite and averred that it provided the basic requirements for a camper's shelter, a protected back, an open front, a fireplace, and a roof. 
Thus, he explained, the ordinary residential arrangement providing rooms for specialized purposes has been abandoned. Instead, each person received a large private studio, each couple a common entrance hall and bath, open porches on the roof are used for sleeping, and in closed patio for each couple with an outdoors fireplace serves the purpose of an ordinary living room. In 1952, the year before his death, Schindler is quoted saying, I camped under the open sky in the redwoods on the beach, the foothills, and the desert. I tested it. I tested adobe, granite, and its sky. And out of a carefully built up conception of how the human being could grow roots in the soil, I built my house. And unless I failed, it should be as Californian and the Parthenon is Greek and the Forum Roman. The takeaway from studying Schindler's Ken King's Road house is that our conventional notion of a house should be challenged. The Schindler's and the Chase's approach to a house could be described as one of reduction. They removed those rooms most commonly found in houses of the day that they found unimportant. These spaces were not unconsciously placed in the home just because all the other houses on the block contain them they were eliminated. If we want our homes to be customized to our lives, they should not adhere to a prescriptive formula. Your home should be unique to the lifestyle that you desire. So if you've never seen it, this is Frank Gehry's home or former home in Santa Monica. And what he did is he took a pink two-story bungalow and he added all these elements of really cheap construction materials, two by fours, et cetera, to the home. And when I was in architecture school between 1980 and 1985, this was the most published building in the world. So if nothing else, it was a great piece of PR. So what about the legacy and influences of Schindler on other architects? The theoretical writings, Schindler's space architecture and Schindler frame, manifestos and Neutra's survival through design still inspire architects. Neutra's circle of young apprentices included Harwell Hamilton, Hamilton Harris, Raphael Soriano, and Gregory Ain. They went on to shape mid-century design, while Schindler's ideas leapt generations firing the imaginations of Steve Ehrlich, Frank Israel, and the architect of the millennium, Frank Gehry.